Welcome to Airheads. Coming up, Retro, Crow and Price. Time for a game of arrows. I'm after a one in a million trophy squirrel. James is baiting in squirrels, but in the woods this time. First, Roy is using the Pulsar DFA 75 to hoover up rats. Roy's place is bursting with life and there are plenty of mouths to feed. Dogs, horses, parrots, peacocks, doves, the list goes on and on. As a result, it's an attractive place to come for a free meal. Some enjoy it so much, they stay, like the rats. We've had quite an influx of rats ever since the harvest. And with the amount of food that we do have around, because we have got a few chickens and the peacocks, so there's lots of corn available for them. They do tend to like setting up home. I don't like using poisons. We've got a few resident owls as well around here, so we try not to poison the rats or the mice because otherwise you can get secondary poisoning. So really this is one of the best ways to try and eradicate them along with uh, pushing them out and uh, getting them with terriers or pushing them out and having a go with shotguns. But if you spend a good few nights with the night vision, you can really start to uh, knock up the numbers. Because Lupton Senior has been letting some lead off with the security lights on, the rats are now only feeding in darkness, so Darren sends Roy some of his kit from Thomas Jacks. He has the Guide IR and the front-mounted Pulsar DFA 75 on his scope. He's also got the additional battery pack fitted neatly on the side to maximise our hunting time. Roy waits in the loo for our first customer. We get a few very quickly and Roy likes not having to compromise his eye relief with the pulsar sitting on the other end of the glass. Then it all goes quiet. We move and set up near another rat feeding point, but unusually we're seeing nothing. There's another little feeding area here that the rats come to, where a few of the bantams have scratched the corn out and feed us. And when we were over there looking across, the rats were definitely coming out and feeding quite regularly. We've now been sitting here for about 15 minutes. And I think where it's quite a bright night, um, we've got nothing behind us, so we're a little bit silhouetted. Um, they're just not, not showing at all. The wind's in the right direction, but I think they're just picking up that uh, something's amiss. Then Roy discovers why. A fox is also trying to solve the rat problem, and the rodents are keeping their heads down. The one we've got here, we've got a fox come in to the bushes here, and is actually looking for the rats. He's hunting away as well, so we haven't seen rats for a little while. And this is probably why we've got a fox just out there just searching around. I don't want to call him and then make him aware of what the call is. We'll see him again through the scope of another rifle. Eventually they brave it again and Roy takes his chance. Oh, there's another body at the back there. And another one there. The guide means we can find all the dead rats, but some are so large we don't need a thermal imager to spot them. For more information about the front-mounted pulsar and battery, plus the guide IR510, go to thomasjacks.co.uk. Nice to see Roy behind an air rifle again. Now someone perhaps better off behind bars, it's David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. The SHOT Show is on in Las Vegas and the air gun industry is seeking celebrity help. Gamo is parading the cast from US TV series Bone Collector. The Spanish manufacturer will have Michael Waddell and Travis T. Bone Turner from the popular series as well as Keith Warren. Benjamin Air Guns is officially introducing the Benjamin 357 Trophy Game Hunting Air Rifle at this year's show. From the hunting brand of Crosman Corporation, Benjamin's Bulldog is lighter than the first 357 and features more than 30 inches of rail space for accessories. It's also bringing out the Benjamin Armada, an AR-compatible PCP air rifle, and a pair of Jim and Ava Shockey signature air guns. Daystate is also announcing a new product. It's the Daystate Pulsar and comes in 177 and 22. Daystate says they're building on a decade of electronic air gun success and the new Pulsar makes the next giant leap forward. Some sad news and the founder of Sportsmatch, John Ford, died earlier this month after a short illness. His son Matthew has been running the company since his father retired. He was a hobby shooter and, and he couldn't obtain good enough scope mounts so he thought he'd make his own. 
Now do you want to find inner harmony and shoot straighter? The National Small Bore Rifle Association, in partnership with the International Shooting Sports Federation, is holding a one-day seminar at the Royal Society of Medicine in London on the 11th of April 2015 on the inner skills of competitive sport. It's aimed at competitive shooters, coaches and sports officials. Visit nsra.co.uk. And finally, a thieving squirrel has slipped up. Or is that slipped down? The rodent was stealing from a bird feeder, but bird lover Robert Kampf solved the problem yeah. with a little Vaseline. You are now up to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Some of you will have fond memories of shooting air rifle feather darts. Well, Phil has a pack and a dart board. So we just thought we'd have a bit of fun. Air gun darts had been re-released, uh, Milbro started to bring them in. And I was trying to think what could we use that would be relatively low power, doesn't, doesn't need a lot of whack, and also recoilless. So we've got this little Crossman Classic, um, got ourselves a nice new shiny dartboard, and we'll have a bit of fun. As close as me. Oh yeah, I was expecting the bullseye. And what sort of power would you get out of that, Phil? I would say about three foot pounds, something like that. We well, seem to be doing all right up close, the kind of distances you'd actually play darts at, but the cameraman's been nagging us to step back, so we're probably at about eight, nine yards now, and we'll see how we get on from that kind of distance. Milbro have managed to find somebody in Germany who's got the technology to crimp all the mohair in, and they've re-released them, and they're in the shops now, as far as I know. Oh, that red one again. You could do this in your garden shed. It's just a fun thing to do. You any good at it? Not really. Still not quite sure who won that. Now, I thought I was onto a winner when I spotted the buck of a lifetime. Now, this is what I saw out of my bedroom window. A trophy squirrel. A trophy squirrel that could look very good next to grandfather's woodland caribou. At least that's what I thought. It didn't stick around for long and I didn't have time to get the air gun out. A week later I spotted the magpie out of a downstairs window and that lured me into the garden with the air gun. I crept quietly alongside a clump of cypress and suddenly right in front of me was my old friend the squirrel. It was a 10 foot shot, not very difficult. However, it was when it hit the ground that I saw that it wasn't quite the trophy I thought. That is mange. And I can't stop itching. Now James has left his office and his bird table of doom to head for the woods. Today I'm going back into the woods to see about the rest of these squirrels. Last time I was here I managed to get three by stalking them through the trees. This time I've been baiting, so I've been tipping out peanuts in the fork of a big old tree. And I think the squirrels have got the hang of uh, coming in there to feed, so there's a good chance I'll be able to get some just by sitting there and waiting for them to come in. I've already checked the zero on the BSA Scorpion, that's shooting nicely on the crosshairs at 20 yards, so that should be ideal. Now this is a, a dual purpose trip because there's a farm just down the road where the, the farmer's got the sheep in for lambing and he's complaining that the, the foxes are already hanging around outside the barn and even sitting on the bales inside waiting for the lambs to be born. There's a good chance while I'm sitting there waiting for a squirrel I might see a fox. This pump action 12 ball loaded with BBs should do the job nicely. So I'm going to go quietly into the woods, you never know, there might be a squirrel on the bait already. I'm going to top up the bait, find myself somewhere nice to, uh, to wait up, and we'll see what happens. Okay, that's it. I'm all set up. Um, I found a spot behind an old storage shed in the woods. I think it used to be an ice house or something. Um, anyway, it's a good spot to, uh, to stand up plenty of cover and I can use the roof of the shed 
as a, as a rest for the air rifle if I need to. So, all in all, I think we're ready. It's just a question of waiting now. I didn't have long to wait though before another squirrel appeared and this one stopped in the open long enough for a shot. With two squirrels in the bag, I decided to take a break and headed back to the barn for a sandwich and a cup of tea. Right, break over, back to work. Back in my hide, it wasn't long before the squirrels were moving again. Those peanuts are drawing them in over a wide area. He's run, but I'm sure he's dead just under that bush. I did spot another one in the tree coming this way. I think that shot must have put him off. Perhaps I'm coming in a minute. And sure enough, he was seen back. Coming back. So that was two more in the bag, four in total. Not bad for a couple of hours' work. Baiting squirrels is certainly easier than stalking them. And still no sign of a fox. Except, right on last light, this squirrel came in for a last feed, but ran off in alarm. I looked round, and who should I see sitting there but Charlie? There wasn't even time to pick up the 12 ball before he slipped silently away, so I'll have to come back another time for him. Right, here's air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. After the SHOT Show in Las Vegas for our roundup of reviews, the late boy scout looks at Air Force Air Guns 45 caliber Texan and concludes that it's a beast. Two Brothers Adventures admires the new Benjamin Bulldog in 357, including an appearance by Team Wilde's Ian Harford. Says it's cool. Crossman brings out its own film about the Bulldog to the world of hunting and pest control with air rifles, and Squirrel Hunter is doing what he does best, this time using his new mobile hide. Thug Cat offers slow motion air gun rabbit and pigeon hunting episode 11 exactly as he describes another 357 and this one is Evanix Sniper X2K reviewed by Rick Utzler of Air Gun Web Air Arms Hunting SA comes up with a game called Guess the Air Gun he is shooting a variety of targets with an air arms rifle and you have to guess what that rifle is and finally it's nepotism I know this is my 11 year old's history project with firebird targets and air guns he and a friend destroy a Norman keep to show that medieval masonry was no match for gunpowder click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it. We're back in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. This has been Airheads. Goodbye. Goodbye.